priorities of life. Are you ready? Yes. Priorities of life. Why do we spend so much time in our social media but have little left to invest in solitude with our master? Why do we believe news accounts are reporting truth while we doubt the word of God like it is fake? Why do we give generous tips to those who serve us but put a few pesos in the tithe box when God serves us? Why do we choose to turn our backs on those who hurt us knowing God, who we have offended, has forgiven us? Why do we share funny jokes and stories to get other, our friends' admiration but are ashamed of sharing with them the greatest news of salvation? Why do we care so much about saving whales and the forest, but insist it is our right to kill helpless, unwanted babies? Why do we use our precious time and energy working for a living only to come to the end of life, leaving it all behind with misgiving? Why do we obsess to accumulate so many things to make an impression knowing that we become possessed to our own possessions? Why do we patiently wait in line for hours to watch a concert, but complain when the church service extends a few minutes? <laughs> Why do we have all the time to watch Netflix and YouTube, but give excuses of being too busy to join a weekly small group? Why do we look forward to the next Star Wars or Marvel series more than the coming of the rapture of the saints? Why do we say we want to go to heaven for eternity but live on this earth seeking for prosperity? Why? None of these would happen if our priority is putting God first in our lives. This past week, I was, so, I was so inspired, I wrote a poem entitled, Faith in God. I hope you like it. When you don't see God's hand, it's easy not to understand. When time is passing by, we think God will never reply. When you lose all hope to pray, God's answer may be on its way. Faith is not something you feel but an action that proves it's real. When you ask the question why, no faith in God is your reply. My name is Kevin. I was an atheist. My name is Apple, and I am HIV positive. I believed in God, but to me, He was just some kind of DT policing our bad actions and a genie rewarding the good ones. Then there's Jesus who died on the cross and rose from the dead to pay the penalty of our sins. I never understood why or how. For me, it was all religion and a compartmentalized life. I used to believe that there was no God and there was no afterlife. Atheism made me feel free, powerful, and in control. I pursued pleasure, power, and possession in my attempt to fill the emptiness, but I've always kept wanting for more and was never satisfied. Depression slowly crept in and I became miserable. I resolved that if I could not find the answer when I reach my 40s, I'll just commit suicide because I didn't want to grow old and miserable. It came when I had just started to pursue a personal relationship with Christ. The shock caused me to lose the things that I thought I value in my life. I had to let go of my business and put my career on hold indefinitely. I was physically incapacitated. I was devastated. I really wanted to die and escape all the horrible things that came with the disease. In the darkest hour of my life, I asked Jesus to save me and forgive me for all of my sins. 
I prayed for him to really change me and restore me because I cannot do it on my own. True enough, he did. Slowly but surely, he showed me what unconditional love is. He taught me how to surrender my life to him moment by moment and how to trust and wait on him expectantly. On June 15, 2015, Rainel reached out and invited me to a CCF event. Our history go way back to high school, so I came to the event just to spend time with her. I felt guilty coming for the wrong reason, so I confronted her about my atheism. God then burdened her heart to tell me about Jesus and his impact on her life as she shared about her illness and faith. And he used this person to intentionally share about Jesus by investing her time and building a real friendship with me. In tears and in desperation, Rainiel said to me, Why are you choosing to stay miserable when you can be happy if you just believe? God's word pierced through my heart, and she was right. Why am I staying miserable? I felt so helpless, and I humbled myself before God. While bowed down in tears, I said, Help me. She gave me a hug and prayed for me as I invited Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And I suddenly had this unexplainable joy and peace in me. Until now, I cannot comprehend how a perfect God like Him can love someone like me that no matter how tainted or damaged I had become, He accepted me without condemnation nor judgment. The healing that He's provided is not just physical. He mended my soul and cleansed me from the inside out. I committed to purity after giving my life for Jesus. And as of today, five years and counting, my viral load is already showing undetectable. Though not yet cured, it's amazing how God enables me to live as if I'm not sick at all. He surrounded me with people who truly care about me and who serve as His vessel to show His great love. I've also been privileged to share His great love not just to the people He put within my reach, but He also uses my life testimony as a platform to reach out to more souls and show them that the love of God is real. And Kevin is one of the recipients of that overflow. And through His grace alone, He was able to change me from the inside out. Knowing about what Christ did for me gives me joy. And being assured of His love grants me the peace I've always wanted. Living a life that follows His example gives my life meaning. Indeed, the relationship with Jesus was the very answer I was yearning for. Had I never met Christ, I wouldn't be here standing before you full of hope and courage. I would have faded away with depression as the condition consumed me. But what has Jesus taught me is that there is heaven here on earth, even as I live with HIV. That for so long we live our life for Him. He can make us pure and complete again through His love and grace. If being cured means I would go back to my old ways and turn my back from Jesus again, then I'd rather be HIV positive for the rest of my earthly life and be enveloped by the grace and love of my Christ. I'm still a work in progress, and I still have a lot to learn from my Lord. But I stand here before you to say that truly, there is no person beyond the reach of God, even those who have denied His existence. To God be the glory. Meron isang Christian na babae, matalino siya, naglalakbay siya sa bundok. Nakatagpo siya ng isang napakahalagang bato. At nilagay niya ito sa kanyang bag. Pangalawang araw, sumunod na araw, meron siyang natagpuan na naglalakbay din. Gutom na gutom, humingi ng pagkain sa kanya at binuksan niya ang kanyang bag, inabot ang kanyang pagkain. Nakita ng mama yung may, mamahaling bato. Sabi niya, pwede bang akin na lang din yan? Walang pag, ano ha, walang pagtutubanggi. Kinuha, binigay agad. Walang patumpik-tumpik, binigay ka agad. Hindi naman lang dalawang isip pa, binigay ka agad. Sabi niya, wow. Sa isip ng lalaki, dala-dala niya, sabi niya, wow, grabe to. Sigurado na ako sa buhay ko. Kahit ilang taon, 
sa mahal nito. Bigla siyang napaisip, paano na bigay ng babae yun? Bumalik siya. Paglipas ng ilang araw, bumalik sa babae. Sabi niya, alam ko sobrang mahal to. Pwede na ako mabuhay for the rest of my life without doing anything. Mahal nito. O ito na, binabalik ko sa'yo. Ba't mo binabalik? Kasi hindi mo yan ibibigay kung walang mas higit pa dyan. Tama ba? Ibigay mo sa akin yung higit pa dyan. Ano yun? Yung nasa puso ko si Jesus. Kaya alam niyo po ba, you cannot give anything temporary if you are not assured of something eternal which is much, much more as in precious than anything else in this world. Alam niyo ang treasure is something na kung handa mong ibigay lahat, katawan mo, oras mo, para lang makuha mo yung treasure na yan. Kaya kung talagang tinitreasure natin si Jesus, gagawin natin lahat just to get to know Him more, to grow in the knowledge of Him because He is our treasure. Tama ba? We will give time to study His Word. We will memorize His Word because it's valuable. But if you don't have that, meaning He is really not your treasure. Pero para lalo nyo maintindihan ang treasure ng Diyos, God treasures you so much. How? He was willing to give the most precious person in His life his only son, Jesus Christ, just to have you. Because you are so important to Him. We are so important to God. Katanong yung sarili mo, are you also giving the same importance to Jesus who gave importance to us?